first of all. I use American Sign Language, and the interpreter on the stage to the left of me is using Indian Sign Language. So I have my personal interpreter, Mateo, using American Sign Language voicing for me. I'm very honored to have been invited here and very honored to have Bridge Kotari mention me on the stage in his speaking and how the magic occurred in the written letter 10 years ago. You know, in that letter that he mentioned, I used his research, I cited his research and his name, and I had hoped when I sent that letter 10 years ago that I would see closed captioning and subtitles on TV. So I want to also thank Gopal and Priyanka for including me and for the work that's being done here every year to make India a much more accessible country. So behind me, this is my 20 minute talk show. I interviewed 14 various business leaders in Denver, Colorado. I love making videos. I love TV shows, the idea of things on the screen. And so I had interviewed 14 leaders. These are 14 various types of inspirational leaders throughout the world. You can shut off the video now. Thank you, if you would please, thank you. <clears throat> so I have a very interesting family story to share with all of you today. I was born in Kota, Rajasthan, here in India, very small village, well, a small town, forgive me. I have an elder brother who is also deaf, and I have three beautiful sisters hearing, and then an elder brother who's deaf. With my parents, when they had the first daughter, they were very excited. The second daughter, very happy. The third child, being male, again, it was in 1974. And when my mother found out he was deaf, he was devastated. She was devastated, crying, trying to figure out, how do I raise a deaf child in this world? And again, you have to realize, in 1974, there was no internet. There was no technology at that time. My parents were very worried, very concerned. They thought, the two girls will be married off, and who will take care of the eldest boy? So they decided to try for one more hearing son. So then the fourth child, of course, was deaf, or excuse me, was a daughter, and so they were like, darn. Then fifth, yay, it's a, it's a boy, it's a boy, it's a boy who's deaf. Okay. <laughs> so my parents said, okay, we have to accept this. There's nothing we can do. We have two deaf sons. So as they were figuring out how to provide resources, what kind of resources to find in Kota, they decided it was time to move to New Delhi. They wanted to explore better education options for me. We moved there when I was at the age of three, and I grew up in Delhi until the 12th grade standard. My parents worked very, very hard. They had to work very hard in order to collect the resources just for the move to Delhi. You know, looking back, I don't know how I survived my educational experience here in India. I think the answer was the 15 years of speech therapy and the committed, dedicated tu tutor that I had three to four hours every day, Monday through Saturday, to make up for what I missed in the classroom being deaf. And the speech therapist was very physical. Speech therapy itself is a very physical, intensive process. So with the speech therapist standing here, again, I can't hear. So learning to speak for someone who is deaf is not easy. So I would put my hands on my physical therapist or speech therapist's body, face, and feel the vibrations and then try to imitate the vibrations. So let me give you an example. With M and N, those are nasal vowels, nasal letters. So if you put your fingers on your nose, go ahead and try. Take the letter M and N you can, and say it. You can feel the difference. The vibration is subtle, but it's different. My language, this was my language acquisition, my language development for 15 years. Again, I, I want to share all of you, I want to share with you the importance of something. This fact is 90% of deaf parents are, or excuse me, 90% of deaf children are born to hearing parents who don't sign and don't know how to communicate with them. 
And out of that 90% of, of deaf children being born to hearing parents, only 10% of their parents ever learn how to communicate with them. So the other 80, 80 to 90 percent who never learn how to sign, they find in the research shows that those children, their language uh, development is delayed, their self-esteem, uh, their confidence, their social skills are all impacted. In the 10 percent, in the environments where the parents sign at an early age, you see a great deal of social skills, independence, confidence, language acquisition, much better, much higher. So think about it. We're talking about 90% worldwide of deaf people who are behind in language acquisition and development because they are born to families that don't develop communication. Once I finished 12th grade standard, I moved to the US to study engineering at the Rochester Institute of Technology where I met other very successful deaf students. I was exposed to American Sign Language and with American Sign Language, it opened my world. It opened my eyes. I discovered, wow, th there's sign language, there's support, they have closed captioning on TV, just like Bridge was talking about earlier. They have that everywhere, it's by law in the US. Interpreters, and I was so mad at India. I was so mad, why wouldn't India give us the same support? Why didn't my parents learn how to, to sign? Why, why? But as time went on, I realized I'm an Indian man. I have to accept what I have, what I was given, and move from there. So throughout my journey in my college years, those college years shaped my life, my identity, professionally and personally. The use of sign language changed my perspective to help me become a leader in various activities. It helped me travel the world. I'd, I've gone backpacking on my own. I follow my dreams today. Now, if we go back to my parents, if we could, I realized after time that I was, I'm so grateful that my parents worked so hard to provide us the resources <clears throat> to send me to the United States. And I was absolutely touched by them and by this action. And at the same time, I thought, this is what they mean by the term deaf gain. They use this term in the United States, deaf gain. Had I not been born as a deaf person, would my parents have ever moved to Delhi? Had I not been born, they may have stayed with the rest of their lives in Kota, satisfied. So with me, my deafness gave them a gain, gave them a platform, gave them the opportunity to expand their resources, gave them the opportunity to also travel the world, gave them the opportunity to provide for the larger family. So this is the term deaf gain. The exposure, the empowerment of deaf people, which also provides and influences those around them. When I look around and I see deaf children, it's so vital. I encourage all of you who are educators, entrepreneurs, Please consider including the exposure to signed languages. Include the parents in learning that so that they can successfully thrive and develop language so they can become independent. When I came back to India after my last MBA, I realized I needed to create in India my own support system, my own team. So I, we have an interpreter. And I've worked with, you know, I work with different stakeholders. I work with different people on a regular basis who have different types of re resources. I worked four years on a road project in Rajasthan. I oversaw the building of a highway, a state highway, 200 kilometers. And what I learned in that period of time What I was talking about with the data earlier, I don't want to misconstrue the story. It is important to remember that deaf people can do absolutely anything except for here. They're absolutely capable. Give them the language, give them the exposure, whatever country they're in, whatever the issue is, that has inspired me and touched my heart. That's what drove me and kept me going in that project for four years and developed my skills as a leader. 
my journey and my life as a deaf professional, I still have so much more to go. I have more challenges that I encounter on a daily basis. I know there will be additional obstacles. It's not the end of my life. I still have so much life. My request to all of you today is to create a more accessible India, not just for me on a selfish level, but we need to think about our next generation, our future, our children, those of us in the room and those of us coming after us. I appreciate greatly the opportunity to be here today. I created a short documentary, award-winning award documentary, talking about how I work as a deaf leader in the business environment. This is a two-minute trailer that I will show here now. Thank you so much for the honor and privilege to be here today. Thank you. Hello, Papa. How are you? I'm on my way to the Coda factory now. Papa, don't worry about it. I've already understood and researched the problem for this. I have confidence in his contractor and he will complete the work on the time. How are you so confident? Who's confident to be able to do it? Did you hear something? Very soon. <laughs> the work is going on very well and most of the work is completed. Okay, looks like we're getting into 